Are you getting sick of Osu? Want a new game about hitting circles? Do you like burning money? Well, I got the perfect game for you. Hello, my name is Derekuma, the main mascot for Mai Mai, and today I'll be talking about my favorite rhythm game, Mai Mai. Known as the beloved washing machine, since it kind of looks like one, it's an arcade only rhythm game developed by Sega. So far, the modern version of the game exists only in Southeast Asian countries and Australia, which is labelled as the international version, while Japan has their own version ahead by a few months. Unfortunately, most of the world is locked out to the game, but do not worry, I will explain later in the video about how you could potentially try out Mai Mai. The game uses 8 buttons around the touchscreen, with 5 different types of notes that appear, the main one being tap notes. There are circles that go towards the buttons. Uh, you just hit them I guess. The yellow ones are paired together and you're supposed to hit them at the same time. You also see some notes that glow. Those are EX notes, which means you're guaranteed to hit them perfectly, no matter what. Yes, that means you can double tap really fast trills. Hold notes are a little bit different to tap notes. You have to still hit the note perfectly, but then you have to hold down the button until it disappears. If you mistime a hold note, then you lose more accuracy than messing up a tap note, so be careful. There isn't hold release timings, thank god. Instead, it is judged on the duration of time you hold onto it. Like, if the hold note is long, you can just let go of it early and it'll still count as a hit. There are even maps where the holds are so short, you basically treat them as tap notes, but since they're holds, you lose more when you fuck up, especially when the mapper puts them on the hardest parts of the map. Very troll. Touch notes are pretty self-explanatory. You see a note on your screen, you just tap it. There's also a hold touch note where it appears in the middle of the screen. It sounds like a boring feature, but there are some apps that use touches in a unique way that makes the mapping creative. One of my favorite examples has to be null control, where you have to hit the tap note first, and then you slide across the screen, hitting the touch notes. The last two I save for last, since they're the more complicated notes in the game, slides and breaks. There isn't a connection to slides to other rhythm games, which make them a very unique mechanic that can be hard to learn. It's very straightforward at first, a spinning star will appear alongside a slider on the screen, hit the star first, and then you follow the star around the slider to complete it. There's also big ones nicknamed Wi-Fi slides, where you have to use two hands to clear it. Those are what slides are on a basic level, but then it gets more complex. Slides work like an erase on a timer, which is how I perceive it. It's like the star is the timer. As long as you clear the slide when the star hits the end, then it's perfect. This means you can erase a chunk of the longer slides quickly, leaving only a little bit left, and then finishing it when the star reaches the end. You do get to see people cheese these mechanics, which makes for some stylish and wacky gameplays, like you see people sliding backwards, or even using their whole arm to complete it. Slides move on a one beat delay, so you don't slide it instantly when you hit the star. You have to wait a beat, and then slide it. It's usually accompanied with another tap note on the star, which is the indication of when you slide it. The delay also depends on the BPM of the map and style of mapping. Higher BPM songs have slides that are instant, while lower BPM have slower and more delayed slides. You can see this with the slowest map in the game, Last Samurai. The slides are visibly slow, as well as having a free beat delay. You don't have to worry about slides that much in most expert maps. It's when you start playing the masters, slides become apparent and a jump in difficulty. It's definitely a skill check for beginners, but try not to be turned away with them. Even though they might be difficult at first, you just need to play more and just get used to them. The last and probably the worst mechanic I've ever seen in any rhythm game is the breaks. Notes that are colored orange are break notes, which use a stricter scoring method. There is perfect, and then critical perfect, which doesn't matter to regular notes, because you will not lose accuracy if you just hit a perfect. Unless you count losing DX score, which only matters to the very top squared Japanese players, don't worry about that. But on breaks, they count when you hit a critical or not. Hitting only a perfect will deduct accuracy by a little bit, but it does add up. The amount of accuracy you lose from breaks actually depends on how many breaks there are in the map. The more breaks, the less you get punished when you don't hit a critical perfect. This also matters with the other judgments. You would lose significantly more when you hit a great, good, or miss a break. 
The only reason breaks exist is to prevent the top players getting perfect scores on every map. So they implement breaks to make it less consistent to get that perfect score. Yeah, good luck when there are 200 breaks in the map. See, look, no one's got a perfect score on this. Okay, you're probably confused by the fact everyone has over 100 in the screenshot. But how the score works is that you start at 101. I know, it doesn't make sense. And every fuck up makes a percent go down until the song finishes. And 80% is an A rank, which means you cleared the map. And then anything above doesn't really matter until you reach 97%, which is an S rank. The rank slowly goes up and then maxes out at the highest rank which is triple S plus at 100.5%. Although the game would only care about the rank groups. The game sees a 97.1 and then a 97.9 as the same theme, which is an S rank. But then a 96.9 and then a 97 are two different things. Even though the difference is smaller, this is why you probably see anyone with a 0.9 at the end of every game in shambles as they were edging for that higher rank. You can full combo maps as well full sync, but they don't make your score better because only accuracy matters. No one cares about my FC because I didn't even pass the map. You should notice with the gameplay in the background about how some people don't press the buttons. It's because people either play primarily with the buttons or the touchscreen. Both playstyles have their pros and cons that oppose each other. With buttons, you get that tactile feedback every time you hit a note, making it easier to time. Although, it requires additional stamina when you push down on them. Another issue is that you're forced to use the screen when it comes to slides and really fast spins since it's smoother to wipe across the screen. So being able to switch from touch to certain parts of the map is another muscle memory to learn. But switching to touch and you lose less stamina because the screen is sensitive and closer to reach, but you don't get any tactile feedback. And you don't need to worry about switching playstyles. Well, sometimes. Playing on the screen makes it easier to clear the slides earlier, which is called splashing. Most of the time, splashing is a skill issue, but there are some maps where they make it impossible not to splash because of how poorly they designed the map, forcing you to tap on that finished slide. Also, it looks cooler when you play buttons anyway. Here's what to bring when starting out. Any cotton kind of glove will work as long as it's smoothed on the screen. My one's like 50 cents, so it's not like it's hard to get. Earphones with a 3.5mm jack so you can hear the music better. I use Apple earphones as a personal choice. And an IME card, which saves your progress. You can register your account on the website to track your scores and stats. You can normally get these at the front register of your arcade, and they should be only 5 to $10. Gameplay wise, don't bother with the basic levels. You actually would need to be missing an arm to struggle with these maps. Start out with the advanced or experts, probably below Below level 9 just to find out what levels are good for you and from there you can progress at your own pace. Try aim for like S rank on these maps. Have the note speed set to 3 or 4.5 to get used to the game and then you should slowly increase your speed until it reaches 6.5 or 7. This speed is usually the standard although I've seen people play at high speeds but it just looks like they're playing whack-a-mole with the buttons or on the hard rock modification. Touch speed generally should match note speed. Keep slide delay on zero, brightness to dark, and display of judgment to show fast and late. Don't worry about areas or tour partners for now if you don't know what they are, because they aren't really important to the gameplay. One of the most important things about a rhythm game are the songs, and my mind does not disappoint, with the large variety with over 1000 songs. Songs are separated into 6 different genres, which are pretty self-explanatory. Nika Voka and Annie Pops for you weaves and Osu players, Toho songs and remixes, Games in Variety, which are mainly songs from different Rhythm or Zega games. Ongeki and Tunifim, which are original songs from Zega's other arcade Rhythm games. And then the My My original folder, which you probably heard from other Rhythm games. Guys, Oshama Scramble isn't the Osu song, it's originally from My My. Other popular My My songs include Glorious Crown, Caliborn, and Excalibur. It's pretty easy to get sucked into the anti-pops or vocal load sections of songs due to the familiarity, but do go and explore these different genres. There are plenty of banger songs and maps people miss out on because of this. Maps are categorized into two different types, standard and deluxe. Since there are two types of cabs, Finale and DX, you can tell with the icon on the top of each song. 
standard maps mainly come from Finale, which is the older version of the game. This means it doesn't have touch notes, EX notes, or any of the festival features since they're all introduced with the DX cab. Additionally, all deluxe maps have the master locked, which means you're forced to S the expert if both players don't have it. You can spend an extra credit to bypass this though. Since DX is the modern version of the game, it's only found in the countries as I've shown before. For any other non-southeastern Asian, you can probably find a finale cab since they're around the world. They're gonna be very outdated, most likely not connected to the internet, and probably all in Japanese. But it's probably your best bet to experience the game. And you can find locations for Mai Mai machines on Zenus. Just scroll down to Mai Mai and look around your area. Most round ones have finale cabs around, so go out and give it a try. I also found some places in America that have DX machines for some reason. But since you're watching a video about a niche arcade rhythm game, you probably don't go outside that much. So instead, you can pull out your tablet and play Astro DX, a Mai Mai emulator. Is it legal? I don't know. You're probably gonna have to look up how to download it or join the Discord server since it's not on the Play Store, but it's pretty simple. The only problem I had initially is the offset being completely fucked and requires constant adjustment. But when fixed, the emulator works pretty well, maybe even better than the actual cab. Anyone with experience with tablet rhythm games can easily get used to the tap heavy maps of the game, but it's much harder to transfer that skill over because how much larger the actual cab is. You'll have to use your arms to move around and hit notes instead of your hands, making you use more stamina and having some uncomfortable patterns to hit. Sundance has this awkward pattern where you have to hit two pairs of notes, and then the third pair you have to quickly flick your hands back. <laughs> But on the smaller screen, this makes it much easier to hit. You can see that my score is much higher on Astro than the actual game itself. But this is one of the few exceptions because I don't really play Astro that much. I think if I did play more than Mai Mai, then I can definitely get better scores. But who cares about playing a more accessible version of the game that is free and functions better? There's something about playing the actual cab itself that makes the gameplay experience feel more unique and special to any other game out there. Since this game is in a public area, you're bound to play this game with other people, which means there is etiquette that has to be developed to keep players in order. The main one is to follow the queue. It's like waiting in line. You let people that have been waiting longer to play first. It's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you stand around the area or socialize and tell someone so they can take a hint of you being in queue. There's also little ones when you play with someone. You get three songs when you play by yourself and then an extra fourth one if you play with someone else. So that means you'll both get two picks to alternate to. So when you're playing with someone with a much higher rating, try not to pick charts that force them to play a much lower level. So master lock charts or low level masters. I've seen higher rated players complain about anything lower than a 14, but fuck off, I don't want to play your note spam garbage maps. I think you can probably make an exception here. You can always check by cycling through the difficulties, or though it helps with higher rated players not picking anything too hard for the newer players. I personally don't mind with lower level masters, but I just want to die when I'm forced to play some piss low expert map. But you're gonna have to suck it up if they don't pick a map you like, and vice versa. There's also spamming songs over and over again. You're probably used to doing this in Osu when you retry a farm, but you're kind of screwing over someone else's entertainment. There was someone that wanted to S rank the song Princess Boy, and I was the only one around that had the master unlocked. So every set I played with her, it was just a set of two Princess Boys every time. The song was awful, the map was awful, I was awful at playing it, and I wasn't gonna improve with the constant playtime. So I just went to play the lower difficulties. But then when I got all perfect on them, I was just stuck with the master. Just looking over at the end of the song and just seeing her score below 97 made me want to die inside knowing that I have to play it again. It got to the point where I just skipped my turn in the queue so I let someone else suffer with Princess Boy instead. But in reality, they paid for the credit. They have a right to pick anything they want, but it's adequate that makes you not unbearable to play with. Although at least follow the queue rules, you would definitely be reported if you don't respect it and maybe banned from your local arcade as well, so don't be a dick. 
It sounds annoying to deal with other people with these map pick politics and long queue times, and sometimes it is. But my mate also exposed me to meet and make friends with new like-minded people. It's a cool social opportunity, just how you would see in social sports for example. I mean, it does feel like a workout with the arm and shoulder movements. There's a reason why every venue has a fan. But I had a lot of cool experiences and the shared interest with my mate allowed our connections to be closer. It then leads to being able to spend time with them outside the arcade from getting dinner after Mai Mai or even just hanging outside. The interactions have always been genuine and I will always be grateful for this game connecting me with newer people. Oh, I know some of you guys found my YouTube channel already so uh, hello. I remember when starting out, I made my goal to reach 10k, the rating to get purple rank. After that, I was done. I was gonna quit because I never realistically saw myself getting rainbow rank. And now after 2 years of playing and hundreds of dollars later, I reached 15k by the time I finished this video. Okay, turns out I didn't get it yet. I'm only like 200 away, I'll probably get it in the next 2 months so for the sake of this video, pretend that I'm rainbow. It was difficult for me because I wasn't some genetically gifted rhythm game zoomer. From all the financials and time spent not just playing, but having the patience to travel to the city and wait countless hours in queue, it was a long but fun journey, and it's scary to think that that could just be the start. In reality, if you want to compare my man ranks to Valorant ranks, 15k is around plat. It's just gonna get harder from here with the rating going over 16k. But I guess the average gamer like me was able to get to rainbow, then you could probably do it as well. Considering if you watch this long, this video will probably engage you to give this game a try and go for it. Just make sure you're financially stable and have leftover money to burn so you can wail on a funny washing machine game. I've seen people struggle to pay their rent because they got too addicted. So uh, don't do that. Just go out to the arcade, have fun, make some friends, and enjoy the adventure this game will take you.